to see through glass. Welcome to Edinburgh train station. I feel a little bit like Francis Bourgeois from TikTok right now. If only I knew what that train was behind me. I'd be getting all overexcited about it like he does, but I don't, I don't know anything about trains. I'm not here for trains. I'm here because a few days ago, Rolls-Royce called me, told me they have one of their cars at their Edinburgh dealership that they need back down in London. They know how much I love a road trip, so they said, would I like to drive it down for them? I said, yeah, sounds great. But I'm suddenly realizing I'm actually doing them a huge favor because they no longer have to pay the cost to transport the car themselves and they're gonna get some free exposure. Uh, anyway, who cares? There's an adventure to be had, so let's go find a Rolls Royce. Well, welcome then to Rolls-Royce Edinburgh. And as you can see, lots of lovely stuff in the showroom. No surprise for a Rolls-Royce dealership. The car I'm here to collect is just out there. Look at that. We're gonna go check it out in two seconds, but I have something cooler to show you, so follow me. I mean, it wouldn't be a seen through glass vlog without coffee and a green car. <laughs> it's, it's a dark emerald Rolls-Royce ghost. The new ghost, like the one that we're about to drive away in, but yeah, and just a colour that oh, was made for me with the black wheels. I feel like you don't see many new Rolls Royces with black wheels from factory. And a lovely, sumptuous black interior. Oh, I kind of wish this was the one that we were driving away in. It's not, because this one's actually sold. The one, as I mentioned, I'm going to be driving all the way down to London. It's that white one there. So yeah, let's go check that out. <laughs> oh, it's even got a white interior. Oh, it's very white. <gasps> Oh, I'm a bit nervous to get in there. I don't want to get it messy. You might remember, I have driven one of these cars before. Actually, I think maybe exactly a year ago. I spent 24 hours in it. I slept in a Rolls Royce Ghost at the UK's biggest petrol station and I'm a bit concerned that I might be about to sleep in one again because it's a bit of a catch to today's adventure. It's currently 3 p.m. here in Edinburgh. This car needs to be at the Rolls-Royce dealership in London by 7 a.m. tomorrow. Now that shouldn't be a problem. From here to London's about seven and a half, eight hours, plus one or two hours for filming. So we've got plenty of time, but it doesn't mean a large part of this drive is gonna be at night. I think that's quite a good thing, because in my mind, Ghost has loads of features that kind of come to life at night. But it got me thinking about maybe implementing a bit of a challenge to today's drive. Do you remember on the original Top Gear, Jeremy Clarkson did a challenge where he raced against the sun. I think in a Jaguar XJ, he took off as the sun set and he had to get to his destination before the sun rose. We're basically gonna be doing the same thing. Now, it should be easy because the sun set here is around 6.30 or 7 p.m. and it rises 12 hours later. If it takes me more than 12 hours to get from Edinburgh to London in a new Rolls Royce Ghost, something's gone horribly wrong. But I just wanted to spice up the drive a bit because without that element, I don't know how exciting this will be. <laughs> Let's wait and see. Anyway, I'm gonna load up my bags, probably gonna grab a bite to eat, and you'll join us next as the sun is setting here in Edinburgh. sunset I was not expecting this sunset it's March we're in Scotland I know there's always a joke about the fact that it rains here all the time but it genuinely does so okay fine that's a lot of cloud but it makes the sunset dramatic and doesn't this car look good out here by the sea and with the rocks and with that sunset yes I'm gonna mention it one more time anyway this very nearly marks the start of our challenge because we well, can't really see it right now but the Sun is about to dip below the horizon it is 10 to 6. I reckon 15 minutes and we will be in the night time. As I mentioned earlier, I think this car really suits the night. Come all the way down here because one of my favourite elements about this new Ghost was the fact that they incorporated a sort of light within this front grille. So again, at the moment it's a little bit subtle, but as things get darker, you'll see they've really sort of made this a, a real point of 
this new ghost, which I, I said I'm a big fan of. So anyway, I'm going to sit here and enjoy the final moments of this quite outrageously, shockingly beautiful sunset. They're going to jump into this car and begin what might turn out to be quite a short journey, but it, it won't be because filming takes a very long time. Of course, I forgot to mention one of the coolest things at night in any modern day Rolls Royce, the Starlight Headliner. Still infinitely cool. Uh, anyway, it's now, got, it's now got pretty dark, so I think it's time to officially start this drive. Two hours later, <laughs> you find me just south of Carlisle. So it's gone 9 p.m. So I called T-Bay or T-Bay, the T-Bay services. Uh, last time I drove the new Rolls-Royce Ghost, I told you that I took you to the, the UK's largest petrol station. Well, right now I've brought you to what is regularly rated the UK's best service station. This is an independent, family-run kind of farm shop. And everyone says it's amazing. So let's head inside and, and check it out. This could quickly turn out to be the most expensive service station I've ever been to. What is this? What is this? This is a this is a service station. I just right, dart it now, we dart on the orange. Hello. There's a clothes shop section? I think I'm going to skip that. I feel, feel alright. Gluten-free sausages. <laughs> this is amazing. I want to come here for my weekly shop. Quite far for me to travel. But... Can I get a sausage roll, please? Which one's better? I'm so overwhelmed by everything in here. I could spend all my. I could spend as much as that that ghost costs on organic items. <laughs> Homemade ginger beer. Oh, no. I've got to be honest, I got really overwhelmed in there. I kind of regret all my choices. I saw some kind of like pulled pork sandwich on the way out. I was like, oh, how did I miss that? I think I'm just going to end up having a massive sugar crash with all the other things that I bought. Bit of a disaster, but it's, it's just very exciting in there. Fundamentally, it's just a really nice organic farm shop that just happens to be a service station as well. But yes, I immediately rate it as my number... Oh, bloody hell. Oh. There we go. Uh, my number one service station in the UK as well. It's, it's bloody brilliant. Anyway, I thought I'd take two seconds if that ginger beer doesn't come and spill all over my pants, uh, to talk about what this car is like on a longer journey. Because firstly, I've only sort of done short journeys in it up until this point, uh, but also I've done many long journeys on this channel and in my life, but never in a Rolls Royce. And it's so interesting because seven and a half hours, which is the journey that we're basically doing today, it's not a short amount of time. I'm definitely used to doing longer journeys, but it basically doesn't feel like it when you're in a Rolls Royce. The last two and a half hours have passed by like that. You just kind of, kind of end up escaping into your own world. It's such a serene experience in here. You don't really sort of think of it like driving a car. It's like riding a magic carpet, honestly. Of course, the car is well equipped. It's got radar guided cruise control and, and heads up display and massage seats and things like that. But you do find those features in other cars. It's the fact that if I'm quiet, it's completely silent. Okay, fine, we are currently parked at a service station, but when you're on the road, there's very little other noise. The road noise is very small. You kind of feel cocooned in, and then you can blast your music and just, just let the world go by. It's almost like you're flying, not driving. And whilst there are some elements which I have said aren't great with modern Rolls Royces, a lot of the sort of 
touch points I think feel a little bit old and some of the tech is also starting to look and feel a bit dated. It doesn't really matter because on a long seven hour journey from Edinburgh to London, it's just easy. It's just easy and look at me, now I'm sitting here in the back with my tray table. I could even put a movie on if I wanted to. I'm gonna enjoy my, um, my homemade ginger beer. Let's see what it's like. Oh, oh delicious, oh spicy, oh delicious. Anyway, yeah, so far, so good. about four and a half hours since my last update. The last couple of hundred miles have been pretty easy, pretty uneventful if I'm honest. The ghost continues to be fairly serene. Uh, one thing I've been keeping my eye on though has been the fuel. Because let's not forget this car does have a 6.6 .6 litre V12 and it weighs nearly two and a half tonnes. So I doubt fuel economy is going to be its greatest attribute but I've been pleasantly surprised. I think if I'd been really careful, I probably could have done Edinburgh to London on one tank, it's around 400 miles. The onboard computer saying it's done about 16.6 .6 mpg, which I can't believe is right, but nonetheless, it's time to put some very expensive fuel in the tank. Okay, fuel in the tank. It is coming up to 3 a.m. Hmm. I'm about an hour away, I think, from the Rolls Royce dealership. Well, obviously, if I head straight there, I'm going to be getting there at like 4 a.m. As you can imagine, no one's there at 4 a.m. I think officially I'm meeting the guys at the Rolls Royce dealership at 7. But of course, sunrise in London's at 6.30, and I'm trying to beat that. I am starting to feel a bit tired, so I've been thinking about getting some sleep. I was contemplating heading home, but by the time I get home and then I have to wake up to beat the sunrise, I would have only had about an hour's sleep. As if I stop here at the services, I could probably get a couple of hours sleep. So yeah, surprise, surprise, as I predicted, I'm once again going to be sleeping in a Rolls Royce. Wow. Well, as I've said, this is not the first time I'm doing this, so I feel fairly well prepared. Take my shoes off because this white leather is way too tidy and clean. Oh, oh man, this will be a pillow instead, actually. Oh, right. I reckon I'll set an alarm for two hours' time. And there we go. No, no, people. Fifteen. I don't know if you can see that. My watch is going to be upside down. I felt a little bit worse than I did a couple. Of, <coughs> oh my god! A couple of hours ago, I just remembered last time I slept in a ghost. It was the extended wheelbase car. Even though I was kind of sleeping across the car rather than lengthways, it was more comfortable lengthways. I've, every, every time I have to turn that light on. Anyway, <coughs> got a challenge to complete, and the sun will be rising in about an hour so I need to crack on head into London with my coffee oh there goes my alarm <coughs> time to drive yes it is I just slept for a couple of hours, which I will caveat by saying I kind of feel like I needed to because otherwise I'm not sure I would have made it to London. Uh, but my challenge to raise the sun from Edinburgh to London has been a lot closer, a lot tighter than I thought it would be. And the minute we left Beaconsfield Services, 
20 minutes or so ago, the sky started to get bright. I mean, according to my Met Office app, official sunrise today is 6.24. It's bang on 6 a.m. right now. So, I, I mean, I've, I've beaten my, my challenge. I've, I've won. I've beaten, I've beaten the sun. But yeah, not by much. I'd say if I if I hadn't slept, if I wasn't filming and I hadn't slept, I probably would have got here around 3 a.m. But yeah, without the sleep, I'm, I'm not sure I would have got here at all. Anyway, I've received a very nice message from Rolls Royce saying, Sam, do not go straight to the dealership this morning. Instead, head to the Conot Hotel because we feel like you deserve a nice breakfast. So yes, before I hand this car back, I'm off for a five-star breakfast in one of London's best hotels. Oh, thank you, Rolls-Royce. I've been trying to think about how to kind of sum up this experience, this quite wacky adventure, one that I'm glad I did, but I'm slightly exhausted from doing. And really the only word I can think of is effortless. I mean, that just sums up World Rolls Royces in general, but especially this new ghost. I basically didn't notice the driving part of this journey. I noticed getting slightly tired, and of course the incredible farm shop service station, but actually when I was behind the wheel, I was just in comfort, just cruising along in this kind of sound space of music and no road noise and cruise control and loveliness. So yes, a ghost was everything I wanted to be on a longer journey and lived up to all my memories of it from a year ago as well. And in this white on white spec, I think it looks pretty good outside a five star hotel in London. Speaking about five star hotels in London, I'm so hungry, I gotta go.